Hi everybody, Al Bernstein here for the Boxing Channel with my friend and my colleague and the very heart and soul of Showbox on Showtime, Steve Farhood. Hey, that was a pretty good introduction, no? I like that. Can you just keep going? Do we, yeah. do we have to do an interview or can you just keep, you know, yeah. with the accolades? I like I, that. I'm going to do four minutes of just praising you okay. and, let, and you could just react. Best interview of your life. Yeah, exactly. I could find four minutes too. Uh, I wanted to talk to you because we're on the eve of the 200th show of Showbox on Showtime. And, you know, Showbox has been such an extraordinary series. Uh, what year did it start in? 2001, July. Yeah. And our first show was at Bally's in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember like it was yesterday, we had two fighters in the main event, both 17-0. and 0, yeah. And the winner, Leo Doreen, became a world champion. Wow. So that set the standard that we've tried to follow. And there have been many world champions after that who got their beginning on Showbox. Yeah, 54 champions were crowned after fighting on Showbox. The point of the series, Al, I would say, as you know, is twofold. One is to kind of separate the, the wheat from the cha chaff because you want to take the undefeated fighters who aren't yeah. real contenders and you want to expose them. But more importantly, give the fighters who will become world champions opportunities, and we've done that. And along the way, and this is one of the things that I think sometimes gets lost and when people talk about Showbox, and I've been privileged to occasionally sit in and, and do play-by-play -play and, and, and host with you, also, along the way, what happens is really good fights are made. And at the end of the day, all that other stuff, I think, wouldn't really um, push this series forward if you didn't have great fights. Well, you get great fights because you get great matchups. Yeah. They don't one doesn't always follow the other, but a lot of times yeah. when you match well, you get good fights. And what a lot of young fighters and their managers and promoters realized is that if you want to move into championship competition, it helps to have yeah. the background of tough fights. Then you have something to call upon when you fight a real tough fight. And on Showbox, generally speaking, a lot of fighters who maybe haven't fought the toughest of competition move up and then you find out about them and the ones who pass the test keep going and a lot of them became champions so it's a good opportunity for fighters some fighters like Ishe Smith for instance uh, really had two stints on Showbox he is very uh, willing to credit his entire career to being on Showbox well Ishe to me is the poster boy for Showbox yeah. he's had four five times on the show and I get the impression I'm sure this is not the case but I get the impression that he's as proud of yeah. his four five fights on Showbox as he is of winning the world title yeah, that's true. but he fought didn't matter who he was asked to fight, he'd always say yes. He gave us some really good fights. And needless to say, for those of us at Showbox, when he did win a world title, it meant a lot to us as well. Uh, I mentioned I, I get to occasionally jump in and work with you guys. Um, I, I want you to tell me, though, without ranking anything, tell me so, a couple of the moments of Showbox, the dramatic moments that stay in your mind that you think are kind of uh, at the top of the list. Well, for fights, uh, a very recent fight that Mauro Ranallo was lucky enough to have called was yes. Mickey Bay uh, winning nine rounds against John Molina, and he knocked out in the tenth dramatically. But my favorite moment, I'll tell you a very quick story. We had a show at Foxwoods, and there was some fighter that Paulie Malinaji, who at the time was just a rising fighter, wanted to fight. So Paul, I said to Paulie, well, Paulie, after the fight's over, rush the ring, I'll tell you where the camera is, and you'll make a lot of noise, which Paulie's good at, and you'll challenge the guy. So the fight ends, Paulie rushes the ring, three big burly security guards <laughs> grab him like this and take him outside, and we're going to arrest him. Oh, my. And we kid about it to this day. Paulie <laughs> talked his way out of the arrest, but we kid about it all the time. He says to me, he almost got me arrested, and uh, he got thrown out of the arena. So it was pretty funny. That was my favorite moment. You know, now that I've heard this, I was wondering why Paulie doesn't speak to you in any of the production meetings. This explains it. <laughs> That's a, he almost had a record because of me. Well, Steve, you've been the heart and soul of this series. Of course, it, you worked with the great Nick Charles, and I, I want before we close this interview, I want to uh, ask you about Nick. Well, working with Nick from day one was uh, a pleasure and an honor, and I learned so much from working with him. He's a great friend, and he was a great uh, mentor. All right. Thanks to Steve Farhood.